So uh, a week ago, Derek Eder wrote in our Slack that there was no presentation today, and did anybody know anybody who could uh, whip up a presentation in a week? And um, I knew that I could because I had already been mapping disaster areas around the world, um, well, not even around the world, like on our own side of the world, just south of Illinois, in Texas, and in Florida, and Puerto Rico, and uh, Barbuda, Barbuda and uh, Puerto Rico and Cuba and like everywhere it just seemed was having a disaster and Mexico got two earthquakes. Um, and so I know that I was one person working in like a couple like 20 minutes every night mapping those areas but the best way to get those maps in a better state is to have dozens and if not hundreds of people doing the same thing. And so uh, in, the, in the large picture, that's uh, Puerto Rico. The big problems in Puerto Rico right now are that people uh, do not have clean water or electricity or a way to communicate with each other. And there's, it's hard for people in, in Chicago to communicate with their family members in Puerto Rico. Uh, then the uh, this top photo is from the Antilles, which I just looked up. It was a huge group of islands with 30 million people. Uh, and then the bottom photo is uh, Mexico. Um, I also learned that in Puerto Rico, their problem isn't that buildings are destroyed because their buildings were all like rebuilt in the 30s and 40s as part of the American New Deal made out of concrete to be hurricane resistant. Uh, but a lot of the buildings do not exist on current maps. And that's why we are here tonight to see how we can draw those buildings in so that when people from around the world are showing up in Puerto Rico to uh, rescue or help people, they know where those population centers are. And so here again are the URLs that you'll need, uh, and I will present these URLs again at another point in the slideshow. So the first thing you'll need to do is create an OpenStreetMap account, and then you'll need to create, well then you would uh, go to that task, and I'll explain all of this, how it works. Uh, and so uh, we're going to map on OpenStreetMap, um, and we're going to use satellite imagery to do it. Uh, and it's really easy. You just like click a button, and then you draw, you trace a building, and then you mark it as a building. Uh, and then you save your work every five minutes so that um, just the, the global map gets updated quickly. Uh, and this is a, a hackathon uh, or a mapathon a year ago in the Netherlands that I was participating in to map the country of Benin, which is in central slash west Africa. Uh, and so I'm going to tell you first about OpenStreetMap. Uh, it's the Wikipedia of maps because anyone can edit it. It improves over time through minor as well as major additions. And it is constantly being validated by people who are more familiar in a place than others. So we're going to be tracing buildings. Uh, Obviously, we don't know what's in those buildings because they kind of all look the same when you're uh, on a satellite that's like uh, several miles above the Earth. Um, but the reason, uh, actually, I wanted to ask uh, which one of these two images is from OpenStreetMap? <laughs> the top? Raise your hand if you think it's the top. Raise your hand if you think it's the bottom image. Wow, I'm so happy. Which one has more detail? The bottom one? Uh, that's partially because I drew it in there. Uh, <laughs> um, so the city opened this bike park on the far south side, and obviously Google doesn't know about it. Uh, and if you drew it in there, Google would then own your data, and you can't have it back, and you can't export it or share it with other people. But with OpenStreetMap, uh, it's all open source, and so you, everything you contribute, everybody else can have a copy of. And actually, here's another example, because I just wanted to show off again how superior OpenStreetMap can be, because everybody can contribute to it. So this is La Vita Park in a uh, little village. And I also drew this one again uh, by taking a visit there and drawing it by hand on a piece of paper, and then uh, scanning my piece of paper, and then tracing my paper. Uh, but then someone at the Chicago Park District um, made their own OpenStreetMap account and tweaked my, uh, my drawing because he had a, an official map of, of the park and he was able to improve upon that. Uh, and so 
now I'm going to jump into like disaster mapping and why we use OpenStreetMap for disaster mapping. Um, so far, OpenStreetMap, since its founding like 12 years ago, has mostly been used by people in uh, developed countries and richer countries that have an infrastructure and, and data to make it easier to map. So, for example, the United States, uh, you know, when you open OpenStreetMap in 2005, it was empty. So um, we filled it in using roads data from the U.S. Census Bureau. And so overnight, or well, actually it probably took several nights, um, this data was imported automatically, and now the U.S. was filled out with roads. So now people knew, okay, my house is on this street, now I know where to draw it. But if the road wasn't there first, then you wouldn't really know where in the world you were. So that's why we, uh, that's why HOT, which is the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, was founded in 2010 uh, as a response to the earthquake in Haiti. And the map, the quality of maps in Haiti was, were either non-existent in a lot of places or, or outdated. And so uh, some people from the United States flew down there, started teaching Haitians how to use field papers. And so field papers are a specially designed uh, printable map with a QR code on it and uh, existing objects in OpenStreetMap printed onto the map so that you can walk around your neighborhood and write down the addresses of buildings or write down like where a water well is or where the pharmacy is or where a doctor has an office. And then uh, you can take a picture of that and upload it to a special website. That QR code helps uh, place it where it came from where, and where in the world that paper responds to. And then a mapper who has a computer and a good internet connection, which is probably not in Haiti at that time, will then uh, translate that person's drawings into a real map on OpenStreetMap. And so uh, we're gonna map tonight in Puerto Rico uh, because there's this dam uh, on Lago Guajataca that is failing. And as of last night, it hasn't completely failed, but um, it looks like that right now, so part of it is broken, and there's a fear that the whole dam is going to break and the lake will empty out into a village. Um, this is to further illustrate the extent of the issue. The bottom, there, the top photo is shows it's an infrared camera showing all the lighting in Puerto Rico uh, a year ago, and the bottom photo shows the lighting. Uh, from two nights ago. Um, so there's a lot of people who need help. Um, so th the, the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team developed the tasking manager to make it easy to divide and conquer. So the, the map here shows the area around the dam that would be affected by a spillover or a, a failure. And uh, all the white or grayish spaces have not been mapped. Um, this screenshot was taken last night, though, and I just looked like 10 minutes ago, and 96% of this area has now been mapped. Uh, so I quickly found another map that we can contribute to because uh, everybody who participates is going to take a little square and do all the mapping inside that square, save their work, mark it as done, uh, and then a more experienced mapper will come in and validate your work. Um, and so the green squares mean validated, the orange mean in progress. So here are those URLs again. Um, I'm gonna leave this up for like 10 more seconds. Um, <laughs> and so, well, three, two, one, okay. Um, <laughs> this is uh, the interface that you would use. So you just draw, all you do is you trace buildings. It is so easy. The roads are mostly already drawn in there, and actually the people who have set up the task have asked that beginners do not adjust or do anything with roads. Uh, because it's too easy to make a mistake, and beginners don't always know how to correct their mistakes. Um, also, we don't really know what the roads are called, if they don't have a name, or if they're like arterial roads, or dirt roads, et cetera. Uh, also, what we are going to do, contributing to the map, is like the easiest thing you can do, short of donating spare money that you have to reputable organizations. 
what we really need is a congressional and presidential response to all of these disasters. So you should, when you're done mapping, also talk to your legislator. Okay, so 96% done. So I have loaded project numbers 3633 on the OSM tasking manager. And uh, it says here the American Red, Qu Red Cross has requested building data generation for planning and conducting relief operations on the island. Um, there's instructions. So this is explaining that um, you can use the default satellite imagery that comes up, but there might be more recent satellite imagery. So if you knew how to change it, you can go ahead and change it. Um, and then we'll click start contributing. And so the easiest way to do it is to click take a task at random. And so it's gonna just select one of these cells at random. And there's a little history here that says um, it was edited or used by other people, but they never finished it. So they saved their con contributions and then gave up the cell for someone else to finish. And so I'll click start mapping. And then I'm gonna edit with ID editor, which is a really user-friendly uh, way to edit OpenStreetMap. And I'm gonna only edit inside the pink box. And when I zoom in, the existing mapped objects will appear. And I'm just gonna kinda scan around the edge of the pink box to just get a bearing on like how large of an area this is and, and to see what's missing. And so I can see at least uh, half a dozen buildings have not been mapped. And I'm just gonna, or maybe they have. Okay, there's maybe less than half a dozen. And so one thing I wanted to mention is that the best maps are usually the ones that you pay a lot of money for. Uh, and the United States has really good maps, Europe has really good maps, but the rest of the world does not. And that's because companies like Google and Bing have not invested the same amount of resources in improving or purchasing maps or paying people in those areas to generate good maps. And that's what I think makes OpenStreetMap so great is that it is free for everyone to use. Um, and it's very easy to contribute and it has generous terms on who, uh, who can have the data. I mean, everyone can download the data. Okay, ah, so I keep forgetting that the zoom level is not the best here. So I'm gonna grab this button called area. Uh, the shortcut is the number three on your keyboard. And I'm just going to trace the building. Oops, and I messed up and I drew a triangle instead. And then you wanna press the S key on your keyboard, which means to square the corners to make it rectangular. And then over here uh, in the search on the left side, I'll type in building, and the only, this is the only, that's as much information as I know. I know that it's a building, I don't know if it's a house or a commercial space, so I'm just gonna leave it at building, and I'm gonna move on to the next one. So this one over here, grab the area button again, and now this house, I think it's a house, is a little more complex, so I'm gonna, you know, trace it, so this, person had an architect probably to add some you know details or design to their house okay square it if I if this was more urgent that I needed to develop draw buildings even faster I would not even bother drawing the the distinguishing features of the outline of the house I would just draw a square and move on because uh, as I said this is an iterative map we can always make it better uh, the, the important thing is knowing where the buildings are, knowing where the population is. I'm gonna draw just a couple more and save it, and then I will be done and have uh, Q&A. Uh, there's a pool here. I guess I could draw that. Let's see if, I mean, it's really small though, and I'm only gonna draw it as a square, not as a circle, because circles are harder to draw. <laughs> Ah, so mean pool. Okay, so I clicked save to upload my changes and it's giving me a warning that there's an untagged area. So um, that's the one I drew and I forgot to give it a tag of building. And now I'm gonna save and um, 
we ask as OpenStreetMap editors that you add a comment to make it easier for reviewers to quickly understand what you just did. And so I'm going to just say added a few buildings. And then there's all those hashtags in there, and that's a way to um, generate statistics on who was contributing to which task. I'm going to hit upload. And now tomorrow morning when the uh, Red Cross responders uh, print out new maps, these new buildings will be on there. Um, I'm going to go back to the OSM Tasking Manager. So here's another one. So once the current task that we were working on around the, the dam that's probably going to fail is finished, which it'll probably be finished by the end of the night, uh, there's another one, um, task number 3631, that has also been marked as urgent and beginner friendly because they mostly just ask for you to have uh, draw buildings and not deal with the roads. But um, let's say that you don't want to work in Puerto Rico, or let's say you have family in Mexico, or you've been to Mexico, and you want to help out in the earthquake-affected uh, area, you can search um, for Mexico, and you can find that this one has only been finished up to 33%. This one has only been finished up to 51%. And so you can contribute basically anywhere in the world. Um, the ideal way to edit a map in OpenStreetMap is to add or improve the map before disaster occurs. And there are a lot of projects around that as well. So for example, in Benin, the country of Benin in Africa, they, they have major flooding every year. Uh, so the, pr the, the goal was to add all the buildings before the flood actually happens so that you're not trying to catch up after the disaster occurs. Uh, and so that concludes our rapid tutorial on how to improve OpenStreetMap. And we'll, I guess we'll do Q&A now. Are there any events where people get together and map together? Yes, but I haven't hosted one in a while. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing it now. What's the minimum number of buildings that we should trace to like do something helpful and not being annoying? Like is one building enough or not really? You should complete an entire square, uh, like this pink square that I had. And so I didn't finish mine, so I need to go back and just click stop mapping uh, so that someone else can take over. Do you know if OpenStreetMaps has uh, any efforts around doing some of this automatically? Using image recognition or you know, technology? Well, we have like four conferences in every year around the world. Uh, the last one was in Japan, the next one is in Nepal, and then the next one after that is Denver, so I'm going to that one, and I'll report back to you after that one. Oh, I'm just trying to follow along. I can't find any that aren't done. They all have red squares around them, so are these? Try task number 3631. Yeah, that's not on. Okay, well, anyway, I'll talk to you afterwards. Yeah, so I will have a, a breakout group in the cafeteria, and we'll keep mapping. And, we'll, and I'll be able to help troubleshoot. Other questions? What is, uh, what is the relationship between OpenStreetMaps and Google? It seems like Google would want to take some of this information. Does OpenStreetMaps have some sort of legal protection against taking this? Uh, Not a plan. Google uh, has licensing terms that mean that any information that you volunteer to Google is owned by, becomes owned by Google. Uh, for example, if you use Google Map Maker, which is a way to edit Google Maps, um, you are volunteering that data for no compensation and you can't get it out. So let's say uh, you want a map of all the roads in West Town, the community area of Chicago. You cannot get that from Google. You can take a screenshot, but you can't actually get that and use it in an analytical way or redraw it or restyle it. And 
So Bing, on the other hand, actually has donated all of its satellite imagery of the world for the purpose of tracing, but Bing still owns the rights to it and the right to uh, withdraw that or rescind that. So I guess we would say that there's no relationship to Google. Which organizations or who is allowed to submit requests to this engine or whatever it actually is? That's a really good question. So the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team manages this website and creates the boundaries of the areas that need to be uh, you know, tasked in this way. And I believe you have to talk to one of their members to get a port, uh, to get your task, your part of the world, up on the website. So why don't all the professional map services just, instead of making their own, just pay people to upload to open street maps? There is a couple companies that do that. There are a couple companies that do that. Uh, but why not the larger ones? I think it has to come down to the terms, the terms, the licensing, the rights to the data, and other restrictions. Like, uh, this is a humongous topic amongst the OpenStreetMap community. Like, who owns the data? Uh, even cities that have data, like, there was a, a discussion the other night about importing the building layer that. A, um, the Puerto Rican government has. Well, why don't we just you know take their buildings and add it to OpenStreetMap? Sometimes those governments or those authorities don't feel comfortable because they feel that they would be liable for the quality of the data after they give it to OpenStreetMap because anybody can then edit it and thus could blame a bad edit on the original source. What is is OpenStreetMap doing with restricted areas like military bases or things like that over the, uh, uh, around the world? Those are usually highlighted um, with like slashes through them. <laughs> um, but if you can see them on satellite imagery, you can map them. <laughs> Although some countries restrict satellite imagery companies from taking pictures of them or publishing pictures, but those rules are not always respected. If, so for example, Digital Globe is one of the major satellite imagery companies. They're an American company. They don't need to abide by Chinese rules unless they want to do business in China. Obviously, uh, doing this for Puerto Rico would have been better done six months ago. What would it take to get people to be more proactive to develop these maps in advance? Um, well, I think having mapathons where a bunch of people get together and spend at least two hours, you can accomplish like thousands of buildings, uh, accomplish drawing in thousands of buildings. Um, but so part of the work of HOT, the Humanitarian Open Street Map Team, has been identifying areas that are disaster prone and mapping those ahead of time, but those are really just like our flood prone areas, whereas like areas that get typhoons or tornadoes, you don't always know where the tornadoes are going to hit, like in downstate Illinois. I mean, there might be a year or a summer where there's no tornadoes, so it's like, uh, why bother with spending time mapping the Philippines? Thank you, Stephen.